Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, relative sort array. We're given two arrays. The second array is always gonna have distinct elements and the first array is gonna be made up of elements from array two, which could possibly contain duplicates and it could have some other extra elements that are not present in the second array. Now we want to then sort the first array based on the order that elements show up in the second array. And for all the elements in the first array that don't show up in the second array at all, those are gonna be sorted like normally in ascending order and they're gonna be placed at the end of the result. So let me show you an example. So these are the two arrays. You can see that two shows up in the first array, one shows up in the first array, four shows up in the first array, six does as well. Oh, three does actually as well, I missed that one. Seven does not, nine does, two does. So there's actually only two elements in the first array that don't show up in the right array. So just to be clear what the question is asking for, our result is gonna look something like this. We just want to take these elements and sort them, but the sorting is not going to necessarily be in ascending order. What they're telling us is that two has the highest precedence. All of the twos in the output have to go at the beginning. So we're going to have three copies of two at the beginning. Then one has the highest precedence. We have a single one, so we're gonna add that to the output. Then four has the next precedence, so four is here. There's just one of them, so that's gonna go there. Three comes next. It looks like we have two of them, so three, three. And nine is next. We have a single nine over here, and then six is next, and we have a single six. Okay. So this doesn't look like the sorted order that we're used to, but like they said, we want to sort based on the original order of these elements. And we have done exactly that. Now we'll take the remaining elements and then uh, put them, let's say in a subarray, seven and 19, and then sort them. This time there's only two elements, so it's pretty easy to sort two elements, but you can imagine that this could have been a very long array with a bunch of elements in it. How are we gonna sort those in ascending order? Well, the easiest way is just to use some kind of built-in sorting method, or you could write your own sort from scratch, but I think built-in is pretty sufficient for this problem. So in that case, we're gonna take those two elements and then just append them to the end after they have been sorted. It's a 19, sorry. So this is what the result would be. Now, even though I didn't explicitly tell you how we're gonna code this up, if you were watching carefully and maybe you wanna rewind, the idea is that it would be pretty nice for us to have the count of each of these elements and how many times does, it sh does each element show up in the first array? How can you count that? Probably by using some kind of a hash map or you could use an array, but a hash map is generally easier. So as long as we have that count, it should be really, really easy for us to build this first portion of the array. And while we're doing that, like while we even build that hash map, we can actually build the array of elements that don't show up in the first array. And then at the end, we can sort that and then add them to the end of this. So that's the idea I'm gonna be using. And the overall time complexity of building this part is really just gonna be the length of the first array. Let's say that is a big O of N. And I'm only gonna use N. Let's say N is the size of the first array. And let's say M is the size of the second array. We know that the first array is always gonna be bigger or equal to the second array. So I'm just gonna use N for the time complexity. So it's gonna be that. But we don't know how many elements are gonna be outside of the first array. So it could be like that dominates the time complexity. So that could be proportional to n. And if we're gonna sort those elements, we're gonna do an n log n algorithm sorting those. So this is gonna be the overall time complexity. Space complexity is also gonna be O of n because we're gonna kind of have a hash map for these. Actually, I think it'd be more appropriate, actually, yeah, O of n because we're gonna be building this subarray as well. So yeah, O of n is the space complexity. 
So we want to get the count of every single element in the first array. So I'm going to call that array one count and I'm going to create a default dictionary. So the default value for any key that we haven't already inserted is going to be zero. Now I want to go through every number in array one and I want to obviously increment the count of this number. So I'm going to do it just like this, incrementing it by one. But while we're doing that, we might as well build the ending portion of our result. That's what I'm going to call it. So these are all the elements that don't show up in array two. Obviously, I could do something like this. If n is not in array two, then append it to the ending portion. But this is an O of n time operation. Searching through an array, which is what is given to us, is a linear time operation. Let's speed that up by converting array two into a hash set. So I'm going to do this array two is now a hash set and now I'm going to check as long as this element is not in the hash set go ahead and append it to the ending portion so now we can go ahead and sort end but we're not done yet we need to build the result we need to get all elements that do show up in array two and we also want to have them sorted in that relative order. So what I'm going to do is something kind of clever. I'm going to go through every element in array two from left to right, because we know the first one has the highest precedence. So then how many times does that element occur in the first array? Well, good thing we counted exactly that. So I'm going to get the count of this element in the first array. So however many times that occurs is how many times we're going to loop. And then for each time, we're going to append that element to the result. So the result will now contain every element that shows up in array two. So now what do we want to do? We just want to merge this array with this one. Well, merge might not be the correct word. We want to append this array to the end of this one. The easiest way to do that in Python is actually like this result plus end. So running this, you can see it works and it does look pretty efficient this time. And if you're curious, the first time I actually solved this problem looks like it was four years ago. And wow, I can't believe I was actually using Java back then. Let's take a look at this code. And oh my goodness. Um, now you guys see why I don't use Java. It looks like I created a custom comparator. That's interesting. Ain't nobody got time for that. There's probably like I probably didn't need to do that back then, but you can see I've come a long way. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.